this is our mechanism. It's the bevel here. And the input shaft is the one attached to the motor right here. And the output shaft is the one the, with the following gear on it. The input shaft to the, compared to the output shaft is 90 degrees. The speed is constant. The torque is also constant. Because both gears are the same size, either the speed or torque is increased or decreased. The gear ratio is 1 to 1. The flow power is reversible. Um, so, we programmed this mechanism to run when we press this button and to stop when we press the button. Where would you find some bevel gears? Um, you can find it in a car um, for the wheels. Um, oh, and is this a second bevel gear you made out of Legos? Very nice. Are you going to show us a picture of bevel gears in the car? Well done. Thank you. Today we'll be presenting the um, racking pinion. The power of the flow of the racking pinion is fully reversible. The input is rotary and the output is linear. Um, the direction is also reversible. You can find the racking pinion in like cars and then also in like potato scoops like, and stuff like that. Here's a small Lego thing we built out of Lego pieces. And we can just go back. Oh. Yeah. Um, this is our mechanism, the worm and wheel. Uh, you would find a worm in string instruments, uh, electric motors, and a winch. Um, a worm is used to re uh, reduce speed and increase torque. Um, the motion isn't reversible. Um, the, a gear cannot drive the worm. The speed is increased. The, um, the torque is increased. And the input shaft compared to the output shaft is increased. The gear ratio is 24 to 1. The flow of power is not reversible and the direct <coughs> direction of travel is reversible. And this is our Lego piece. As you can see, the worm drives the wheel. So this can only turn this, but this cannot turn this. And we programmed our mechanism to go forward, to stop, and go backwards. And that is our mechanism. Mechanism the lead screw. You can find it in many um, mechanic tools. And this is a Lego um, version of it. The input movement is rotary, and the output movement is linear. Um, it takes um, 4.75 rotations for the um, block to move one inch. The force of power is non-reversible in it, and within the outputs of the um, lead screw, force is increased, and um, oh God. If force is increased, something else must be decreased, I'm sure. And speed is decreased. Great. Um, and the direction of movement is reversible. Wonderful. And what sort of mechanic tools would you find this in? Um, a car jack and um, in some drill presses. Alright, this is our mechanism we built. It is a crank and slider. Uh, people in our group built it. Me, Owen, and Erica. And it's pretty hard, but we did it. And Owen built it. Input movement rotary output movement reciprocate. The slider moves two inches every rotation of the crank, or also that's the diameter of the crank. And if the crank diameter was increased, the slider would move an increased distance. Okay, and then this is our Lego model of 
this and we couldn't get it like that because it's kind of impossible to do that. So we had to do it upright. So, and then for the full power, you can't reverse it, which is kind of cool, I guess. And uh, where you can find this mechanism is on uh, trains and I think like auto windows or something like that. And that is our presentation of our awesome mechanism. Make the mechanism go. Oh. Show us the program. Sorry, my bad. Our mechanism is the universal joint, and you can find these in like cars and RC cars. The speed of the universal joint is constant. The speed and torque is constant, sorry. The angular range is more than 90 and less than 270 degrees. The speed ratio is one to one, and the flow of power is reversible. This is our mechanism, this is the chain drive, and this is the driver gear, this is the driven gear, and the angle of the input shaft is parallel compared to the output shaft. shaft turns in the same direction of the output shaft and you can find examples of this mechanism in bicycles or motorcycles. The output of the input is 3.5 and when the smaller gear becomes the drive then the, um, the speed is decreased and the torque is increased. And the input shaft turns in the same direction as the output shaft and if the smaller gear is the driver gear then the torque is increased, if the driven gear is... If the bigger gear is the driven yeah, gear. Yeah, the bigger gear is the driven gear, then the speed is increased. And this is our... Sorry. <coughs> this is our mechanism, <laughs> a simple gear tree. And you can find it in clocks and watches, and this is a picture of it, like an example. Um, the idler gear makes the two bigger gears turn in the same direction. And this is our uh, mechanism made out of Legos. Okay, this is our rack and pinion. It moves side to side by this gear moving the rack here. When you turn this, it moves side to side. And that's it. Um, the type of input movement is linear, which is the, the input is this, and the output is this, and it's rotary, and it spins along each other. The flow of power is um, reversible, and so is the direction of the direction of travel is reversible. This is used in cars and meat processors, which is pretty cool. This would be the steering wheel, and this would be the axle part, and the wheels would be on the sides. And this might fail, but. Hey, what's that Lego thing you have there? Oh yeah, this is the little um, Lego thing that Rack and Pinion that we made. These are the stoppers, 
uh, this is the output gear, the rotary, and this is the rack gear. And you just turn it, and like, and these blocks so it doesn't like fly off like this. These are my partners, Alexis Kaplan and Ashley Huntingdale. The mechanism we built is the crank and slider. This right here is the crank, and here's the slider. Um, in real life, you could find crank and sliders on trains. Here's an image right here. This would be the crank in this idea. Here's the slider. So when we run it, the crank right here is the input. It's spinning in a circle, so that's rotary. The slider right here is the linear. It's the output because the crank is causing this to move. And we can run it in a loop. It'll run for five seconds and then stop. And we can just keep going all day long until the battery dies. Anything else? Is there anything else? And if, if we increase the if we increase the diameter of the crank, I do believe the slider would go farther distance. I am Sam, and these are my partners, Wyatt and Lacey. So the, we, our mechanism is the Worman wheel gear. This is the input shaft, and this is the output shaft. The flow of power is not reversible because you can't turn the output shaft and make, to make the input shaft work turn, but you can turn the input shaft to make the output shaft turn. You, yes, you can. <laughs> um, and the direction of travel is reversible, so I can turn it this way, or oops, I can turn it this way, or this way to make the output shaft turn. There is a decrease in speed and an increase in torque, and the input, the angle of the input shaft compared to the output shaft is a 90 degree angle, and there is a 36 to 1 ratio. We also made a little model out of Legos. And, and there's a real example. It's called a winch. Awesome. Let's see your program. Oh, yeah. And we programmed it to stop and start with the push button. Very nice. Thank you.